Hello nerds! This week on the LARP House we are going to show you how I made a severed head prop for LARP in three days. So get ready for a wild ride as I cope with some rookie mistakes, turn the head into a giant dish sponge essentially, and ultimately create a disturbing prop that the community can use and reuse. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, so we're starting off a little differently than you normally would. Normally you'd have an armature and you'd sculpt the entire skull and, and facial structure, but I have decided to just friggin' sculpt right on top of a mannequin I already had because I'm all about cheating whenever possible. So, yeah, but the thing is, this is gonna cause a lot of problems for me later. We will cross those couple ridges when we get to it, but for now, it's working out great, you know? I didn't have to plan anything, I just start slapping on the clay and start making it look like the dude that I was given a picture of. So, a tiny blurry picture to work with, by the way. Just adding a bunch of girth to the neck because humans, unless you're me with a pencil neck, have generally like just big beefy ass necks. We're just rounding that out. A lot of taps. Just tap, 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 tap. We're just fine-tuning it here, making it look a little bit more like, like the person. That's really all I'm doing, just noodling a bunch. Tap, tap, tap. Scrape, 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 tap, scrape. It's, it's all sculpting is just a lot of, a lot of tapping and scraping. Not a whole lot going on, just, just reconsidering my eyelids here. Dude's got some heavy lids. Isn't that weird? It's a weird thing to say about a person. I think it's super like, don't really care if I hurt the person's feelings if I make comments about their part of them that I am sculpting. It's nothing personal. It's just genuine artist observations. We're smoothing out lumps here, adding some, oh, adding a, a couple of million years of evolution to the forehead. You know, that's needed. Overall, just widening the face, because this guy's just got just a lovable, round, wide face. We just want to give that back to him. This this mannequin head is just like Slender Man. Just getting into the weird little details of, of eyeball anatomy. Helps to know a little bit of anatomy. Of course, if you're looking at reference, you shouldn't shouldn't have to depend on that so much. There's more scrapes. Carbon scrape. over that eyelid over there. There's like quite beautiful delicate lips for a man. Just a lot of taps. Tap, tap, tap. Here we go. And this is alcohol and a brush to try to smooth out the lumps. And that's not working out, so I just get a huge ass chip brush and douse that in alcohol and just Basically, it's kind of like taking sandpaper to it. Um, you smooth out teeny tiny lumps, and when you use modeling clay and, and the tippity tap method that I like to use for sculpting, you have a lot of tiny lumps. So this helps get rid of those. And I'm also using it to add um, the texture to the lips. Eventually, just like drag the chip brush down across the lips, and it makes that good texture. Pretty, pretty cool trick. Noodling with the with that nose again. I love noses. My favorite part to draw and or sculpt of people. I'm really upset when people have uninteresting noses. Like genuinely upset. Ah, now we're starting to sculpt the the wounds a little bit. Oh oh no, we're gonna obsess over the eyelids a little more? Okay. Alright. 
Okay, there we go. Yeah, we're, we're getting into the wounds. We're just gonna make those, those skin flaps super prominent by making like a wavy motion. Cause you know, skin puffs up when you, when you die and it gets all rotted and infected. Wonderful. And after all that obsessing over that eyelid, I, I have gone and gone and decided to put a huge gash. Maybe, maybe I was unsatisfied. Like I, I can't get this right, so no one will know. Just put basically like I don't know what is that like an axe wound to the face. More alcohol with the chip brush. More caps. Smudges. You can never have enough taps and smudges. Just adding some more tears. This guy's head was not removed um, delicately. Just want him to be as messed up as possible. just me actually looking up severed heads. It's hard to be in this line of work if you're kind of squeamish. You gotta be prepared to Google some dark shit. I believe here I am actually going in and adding skin texture now with a with a stabby tapping motion of the chip brush. Creates actually kind of a nice skin texture. If you smooth it out a little bit with your with your finger it does a pretty good job. And here I have procrastinated sculpting ears because I was hoping that while I was sculpting the rest of the face, humanity would have evolved past the point where we have ears any longer. But that did not happen, so there we go. And now I'm preparing to make the mold. Finished my sculpture. I've created a mold wall with um, flat strips of clay smushed around the edge of the first half of the sculpture, and I put registration keys there. And I'm delicately drizzling a layer of Ultra Cal 30 over top of it for a detail layer. Now, I did not put any support under the mold wall that you see, that what basically looks like a bonnet, and I'm about to regret my entire life because of that decision in a few minutes here. But, um, coming, looks to be coming along pretty well. We've got the, we've got the detail layer going. It's uh, pretty thick, pretty nice, and then, oh god, everything is ruined. So I basically had to smash the mold wall back onto the sculpture, which is just going to cause a just a boatload of problems. But there you go, you stick some burlap in the mold and wait for it to cure, and we're back cleaning the clay out of that horrible smashed mold wall that we had to create. So just getting the clay out of all of the ruined crevices that I've created. This is supposed to be just like a wonderfully perfectly smooth with the registration keys. But it is not. It is a hot mess. This is like a crumbling city of mess. So what I'm doing is I'm smoothing it out. Because if I were to pour the back half of the mold on top of that edge, it would have interlocked in too many places and I would have never been able to separate it. So I'm smoothing it out and adding some like little lumps here and there for kind of like registration keys, kind of. But um, yeah, this is like... This is just a fucking disaster. And I'm trying to fix it at this point. Just cool. And because I am like I am like old man with a shotgun levels of paranoid about about this mold at this point, I do not trust the mold release. So I'm literally I'm gonna take some of the mold release, and in addition to that, I'm gonna stick down literally plastic bags to keep the ultra cow from sticking together. I will have this mold apart. I do not have time for any shenanigans that it might try to pull. Just laying the plastic. I'm mixing the Ultra Pal thicker this time. Like, um, not peanut butter consistency, but more like almond butter, maybe. I'm just capturing the details as best as possible with that first layer and then thickening it up for the layer where I put all the burlap in to strengthen the mold. It's basically paper mache, but with burlap and cement. This is Ultra Cal 30, a a gypsum plaster cement, and it's super hard, harder than plaster. It'll last forever. Now, once it's cured, you just use a little blood, sweat, and tears and pry it off. This is like 
This is not, not want to come off. This is not my day, but it does. Even though there's like a scary hairline crack in the mold, we're fine. Th that was me just cleaning it with alcohol. This is me putting mold release on it. Just copious amounts of mold release. Oh, so much. And I'm not even taking the plastic off. Like, honestly, why? Then we're, we're good to put the mold strap on. And I'm going to show you how to do this because it is not intuitive. You see, you see that bottom bit? Looks like it's just there to to hold the, the strap to the buckle. It is not that you actually put the strap through that. That is part of it. Not not what I would not what I would intuitively guess. Then you just lace it through like that. And you don't want to make it too tight on your mold. You just want to hold it together or you might, you know, cause the mold to, to crack. See, that's too tight. So make it a little looser and pop it down. And you are ready for foam. Oh yes. Flex foam at six. It's a semi-rigid foam. And you see me mixing little bits of it here. That is because it says on the box that it expands up to 10 times its liquid volume. I'm gonna call shenanigans on that. It took me an entire trial size kit to fill up that head. And I'm pretty dang sure that that head is not 10 times the volume of the trial size kit. Pretty, pretty dang sure. Took me actually a little bit more than that. So now we're gonna release it. It's, you know, no devastating flaws as of yet. Release your head from its concrete prison. Ah, and there are a couple tears, but overall, it's salvageable, patchable. We got this. Just sort of trim off the, the edges and clean it with alcohol. Now what I did was um, take it to the sink and wash it in the sink. Do not do that. This is a giant foam head. It will turn into a giant dish sponge. Just clean it with alcohol and a scrub brush. God, God, don't wash it in the sink. It took an entire day to dry out and that was a, that was like a valuable time wasted. And here I'm patching it, patching it up with DAP Quick Seal. It's a flexible caulking agent. It, it's, it dries, uh, it shrinks when it dries, so you're gonna want to add more than you think you need. And once you get it all in there, you're just gonna want to smooth it with water to really blend it in, but you could paint on it and everything. Smoothing it with water there. And here, I am sawing off the back of the head because my mannequin's head is a little bit like ancient Egyptian action going on there. A little, little elongated, but I'm just making the wig fit like a proper human head. And I have already painted a primer layer of gray acrylic paint mixed with latex, and now I'm just going over that. Nothing special about that mixture. I use Woodland Scenics liquid latex, um, not liquid latex for makeup. And here I'm basically like creating a dark wash in and around the, the wounds and then going back in with uh, basically a light wash around the edges of the flesh. Going back in with some reds and this is of course like I've I've painted under the light wash some some greens and ugly gross dead colors so just painting on the eyebrow and here I'm stippling on facial hair because I'm a piece of shit I ran out of time because when your dad gets married with three days notice you don't have time to freaking lay a beard onto a dead head you, you gotta you gotta make do but it looks pretty good all things considered not bad you got a you got a pretty nice dead head it's gonna shock and disturb all of your best friends which is which is really what we're all about here at the LARP house. There you have it, nerds. Use my methods or don't, but learn from my mistakes and prosper either way. Or just point and laugh. It's cool too. Just make sure you don't lose your head in the process. If you like what you see on our show and you want to see more, please consider making a small pledge to us on our Patreon page. We have big dreams and tiny lots, and that would be really cool. If you have any comments, concerns, emotional outbursts, or questions, remember, two heads are better than one. Contact us on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, or Instagram. Don't forget to check out our Etsy store if you like to stay ahead of the game with handmade prosthetics and props. And as always, nerds, like us, subscribe to us. So get ready, ready, ready.
get wedding for a wild wide. That's a wild wide in the wilderness. <laughs> the wildest wide in the wilderness. Your face just 